day, my dear friends and students. <laughs> I consider you both friends and students. And that's why I go to extremes to ensure that you get the menopause education you deserve. Here we are tackling a big unit on a big topic, breast cancer. Breast cancer seems to be at the top of every woman's list of concerns. So I'm going through and systematically addressing absolutely everything pertaining to breast cancer. Of course, I'm not tailoring everything to you specifically in this or any other video. Tailoring happens only in consultations. What I do here is give you the overall education and all the facts. This unit started with video number 356. The first seven videos addressed normal breast tissue and non-cancer breast diseases. Video number 363 was the first video on actual breast cancer. We started talking about risk factors for breast cancer in video number 366. And then in video number 367, I addressed the different differences between hereditary and non-hereditary breast cancers. And last week, I presented the specific genetic mutations that can increase your risk for breast cancer. And today, we'll begin discussing the long list of risk factors for breast cancer in general. You've seen that for each disease I present, I give you the list of risk factors that increase your risk for that particular disease. And for breast cancer, the list is a long one with all sorts of twists and turns. So today I'll present the list as a whole, and then I'll present individual videos on the individual risk factors, and that's when I'll discuss each one in detail. In my book, both first edition and second edition, this material is in chapter 30, all of which is on breast cancer. You'll discover that if you watch these videos alongside reading the book, you will get the best menopause education ever. All right, apart from having a genetic mutation for breast cancer, what are the other things that can put you at increased risk for breast cancer? How many factors can you cite? How would you answer this quiz question? Which of the following is not a known risk factor for breast cancer? A. A genetic mutation for breast cancer. B. A personal history of breast cancer. C. A personal history of radiation therapy for another cancer. D a family history of breast cancer, E, increasing age, F, early age at first menstrual cycle, G, late age at first full-term pregnancy, H, few or no pregnancies, I, no breastfeeding, J, late age at postmenopause. K, high number of menstrual cycles. L, dense breast tissue. M, high dietary saturated fat intake. N, drinking alcohol in moderate quantities. O, smoking. P, sedentary lifestyle. Q, obesity. R, using HRT for menopause management. And S, none of the above. They are all known risk factors. If you've been a student here at Menopause University for a while and have been watching my videos in order, most of these options were easy to rule in or rule out. But you might have wondered about one or more of them. Well, here's the quiz question again with the answer in bold. Notice that the question specified known risk factors, and using HRT for menopause management is not a known risk factor, and I'll be giving you detailed videos on that later in this unit. 
What I want to do today is simply present this whole list to you and divide it into categories that will set the stage for how I address these factors in future videos. That way you will be in the know. So let's just get right to the long list of risk, risk factors for breast cancer. Here we have our chart of risk factors for breast cancer. In the column on the left, I've divided them into seven categories. Genetic, personal cancer history, family history, age, menstrual life, breast density, and lifestyle. And in the column on the right, I've listed the individual risk factors and color-coded them according to the category to which they belong. Genetic mutations are in green for the genetic risk factor category. Personal history of breast cancer and personal history of radiation therapy for another cancer are in pink for the personal cancer history category. Family history of breast cancer is in lavender for the family history category. Increasing age is in yellow for the age category. Early age at first menstrual cycle, late age at first full-term pregnancy, few or no pregnancies, no breastfeeding, and late age at postmenopause are in orange for the menstrual life category. Dense breast tissue is in turquoise for the breast density category. High dietary saturated fat intake, drinking alcohol in moderate quantities, smoking, sedentary lifestyle, and obesity are in blue for the lifestyle category. And notice what is not on the list. Hormone replacement therapy, birth control pills, infertility treatments, or estrogen. And I will be giving you individual videos to address these things that aren't on the list too. What's not on the list is just as important as what is on the list. And that's because if you manage your menopause around a complete misconception about what constitutes a risk factor, things will not turn out very well. The reason I always want you to see the entire list is that no one factor stands alone. We live, unfortunately, in a world of sound bites. Because there is so little in the way of real education these days, and because people think they can learn things by hearing this and that in disjointed fashion, your tendency is to think that any one of these things can result in breast cancer. But it doesn't work that way. No one factor stands alone, not even the genetic mutations. I explained that to you in the last video. So do not look at this list or any one factor on the list and assume that it is a guarantee for breast cancer. For every case of breast cancer, even the genetic ones, accumulation of repeated damage to genes adds up over time to become cancer. And that damage comes in the form of these things that are on this list. And who knows how many others haven't even been discovered yet. But with all the overblown fear of breast cancer these days, it's common for women to think that every risk factor is the whole story. But no, risk factor stands alone. The whole story is always more than just one risk factor. So, as we search forward, I'll present each of these risk factors individually, and I hope that what I teach you allays some of your fears. It should, because breast cancer has been exaggerated into a much bigger beast than it really is. I just care about the truth, and that is what I will always give you. You can do whatever you please with the information I deliver. I have nothing to sell you and I gain nothing by how you choose to manage your men menopause or use any information you get from me. But I think it's a crying shame that you are not getting the whole truth or the whole story. Instead, you're getting terrorized and my goal is to replace your terror with truth. So in addition to the chart of risk factors itself, your summary for today is as follows. Breast cancer has a long list of risk factors in a variety of categories. 
but none of them stands alone in actually causing the disease. And as always, you can find the chart in the description box link or at menopausetaylor.me. So this is where I'll stop today. Be sure to come back next week for a tutorial on the risk factor of a personal history of breast or ovarian cancer. If you've had breast or ovarian cancer or any kind of cancer, you should definitely schedule a consultation with me at menopausetaylor.me. I have yet to encounter a single woman who fully understands her breast or ovarian cancer situation. And having a consultation with me will enhance or correct your understanding immensely. Subscribe to my newsletter and channel if you haven't already and follow me on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, and Stories. Bye!